or address those three issues. One of them is he's robbing drug dealers, okay, I mean, and he carries a stick. The, the last thing is I, you know, I beat a murder rap for 30. Um, I, mean, I beat a murder rap, paid my lawyer 30, and then uh, me and my slimes are above the law. Okay, the first thing I want to take up, counsels, is um, Mr. Williams' motion to su uh, supplement, should say motion to supplement, supplement to motion limiting number two, motion to strike in regards to the court's earlier rulings consistent with um, the lyrics and songs that I said I, that the court would preliminarily admit. The judge finally, finally came around that the appellant authored the lyrics or that the views and values reflected in the video were in fact adopted or shared by the appellant. So I thought that was important because here the state is trying to introduce numerous um, lyrics and videos. Let's talk about that. Baker arguably involves the introduction of a video which there's little nexus to what, he, what they're trying to prove. Could you discuss for me how that in this particular case, the state has said, look, we're going we're gonna to tie this to some aspect of membership, of leadership, and other things that are required to be proven under the gang statute. So tell me how, to, if you could distinguish that for me or, or talk about that, because I think the facts in Baker are, are a little bit different than the facts in this particular case. And remember, I've also told you it's subject to foundation. So... Um, so address that for me, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. But the state can't do that. They didn't proffer to you any, anything that would associate these lyrics with a certain crime. The closest they came is they told the court that trestle tree, that Jeffrey Williams said the word trestle tree, which is a, a section, a street um, where crimes were committed in this case. The fact that he is, he is using trestle tree in a song certainly cannot be that he's somehow involved in that crime. In addition to that, the prosecution has spent four months showing or trying to show that Mr. Williams is the leader of this gang. They have put on over objection Mr. Bean's recorded statement with Detective Quinn saying that Jeffrey Williams um, orders, he commands Mr. Murphy to do something. They put on Trontavia Stevens who said inconsistently but said Jeffrey Williams is a member of the gang. They put on that Jeffrey Williams is the slime, the big slime, um, king slime, rather, excuse me. They put on Detective Belknap. They are going to use over objection Detective Gaither as a gang expert on YSL. They're going to use Detective Dennis as a gang expert on YSL over objection. They're going to use Investigator Viverito as a gang expert on YSL. And all of them make, uh, for certain, over objection, Mr. Williams, the head of this supposed criminal organization. So why did the lyrics have any probative value if it's simply cumulative? I'm trying to answer your question, but my, my point is to use the art, to, to assume that that is statements that the state argued are confessions. That's what they said. These are confessions. They said that we didn't go out and find them. Mr. Williams, you know, handed them to us. These are his his inner workings of his mind. But it's an artistic industry that our courts now, for the first time, this is the first time in Georgia, our court has said in footnote 16, we got to be careful. And they cite to these cases that say you got to be careful. The certain topics, he or she acted in accordance with those views. And all I believe is going to happen is you play those videos with those lyrics, or you have somebody say, here are the lyrics, taken out of context, then the, um, then the jurors will be horrified and be prejudiced, as was in Baker. That is pretty much my argument. I am not changing anything I relied on. Um, I heard what the Sonable Court said, and I did understand you say that the state has to lay a proper foundation before they can admit any of these, but that foundation now, according to Baker, is really tied hard to specific facts and not just generalities. That is my argument. Another uh, realization I'm having as I'm hearing these defense arguments, Your Honor, is that um, this Baker case came out, and it's a case that applies 403, but it doesn't change 
the law on 403. I think we're getting arguments that sound similar to the idea that, you know, Baker came out and it's, there's this case where a rap video was excluded. So therefore, that's now a change in the law that means all rap type evidence is now radioactive under 403. That's a flawed proposition, um, as I'm going to get into. So I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Williams' arguments, and then I'm going to try to get into Mr. Um, Stilwell's arguments uh, in a little bit more specific. And I may refer to my colleagues when it comes to the granularity, uh, but I just wanted to provide an outline of my, our thoughts on the law here. So Baker um, is being touted as though it kind of automatically operates to vacate this court's lyrics order from November. Um, that's not the case. It doesn't suggest that. It certainly doesn't compel that. I want to start with the fact that Baker is a 403 case. Um, and as such, it's a limited <laughs> fact-specific holding. We know that the court and all the parties have read Baker. Uh, but just to reiterate, the sole enumeration of error in Baker was the trial court abuse 403 in letting this video in. Okay? So there was a pretrial motion in limited to exclude specifically this video, by the way, a particularized pretrial motion. Um, and then the trial court's order denying that motion said, oh, yeah, it's relevant for identity, and it's relevant to show his relationship to this other guy who's an indicted third party, by the way. Um, so with really no explanation, the trial court just said, yeah, it passes 403. And then there you have it. It gets in. Um, notably, as pointed out by my colleagues, Baker's identity at the nightclub where the incident happened was absolutely uncontested at trial. Uh, for highly, wildly distinguishable uh, from the facts uh, in our case. So the, the video, very, like there's nothing really in the video connecting the guy to the murder. But meanwhile, what it does show and what my colleagues have pointed out was that it does show Baker dancing and brandishing a semi-automatic pistol with apparently an extended magazine. And he's pointing it at the camera, at the jurors when they watch the video. And they watch it three times, okay? The prosecution, our colleagues over in Houston County, they made hay with this video, okay? They played it three times. They played it once during the lead uh, detective uh, direct. Um, the suggestion was that, you know, this, this is a violent gunman. Uh, they put it again during cross-examination when Baker took the stand to kind of confront the idea like, oh, well, why would I have guns around? No, this is why, because look at this video. You're a violent gunman. So they're reinforcing this propensity argument in Baker, and then they, they really nail it to the wall in closing in Baker, where they just drive it home that not only is uh, Baker had this propensity to commit gun violence, but he has this propensity to promote it and glorify it in this video. And they, I mean, it became a central focus of the case. I mean, that's right at uh, page 32 in Baker. It was proof essentially of nothing, Your Honor, and it became a central focus of the case in Baker. And so when you talk about, oh, the, you know, the idea that uh, 403 contemplates that you can um, look at a piece of evidence and kind of look at its tendency to lure the fact finder into declaring guilt on an improper basis, it's absolutely, I mean, the Supreme Court had to conclude what it did. Uh, about the attributable to him that he finds objectionable, or at least he hasn't made any argument as to any wise, any specific lyrics why they should be excluded under Rule 403. Well, I didn't hear one. I didn't see one in the motion. I didn't hear one argued before Your Honor today. And highly important in Baker, uh, the video had some disturbing imagery, et cetera, but the lyrics were explicitly not at issue. It's not a lyrics decision, Your Honor. It's a 403 decision on imagery. Um, it's, it literally says um, on page 18, note, footnote 13, the lyrics have no bearing on our conclusion that the rap music video was improperly admitted. That is highly important. Uh, I didn't hear any defense address that. Because in this case, the lyrics as statements, by the way, they're not just songs, they're statements. And they're statements by parties in this case. Um, but the lyrics are exactly what was issued. And Your Honor already correctly ruled on the same, OK? We ruled on them as admissions of a party opponent under 801 D2A. I mean, John Floyd came down here. Mike Carlson came down here, uh, deputy district attorney. Hilton, we put on a heck, a heck of a proffer. It went for hours, okay? We put them in as adoptive admissions under uh, 801 D2B. They came in under, she was dealing drugs, you know? I mean, I, I, I can think of a lot of different things that the lyrics could apply to. There's no, with that, with regard to those particular lyrics, I'm not able to pin down exactly one part of the case that that applies to, but to say. Well, uh, that's what, that's what you have to. I mean, that's, that, that's kind of what. That's kind of what Baker and the other cases kind of tell me is that I just can't admit this for shucks and giggles. I'm being over, over, over dramatic, but you have to admit it for tying to some specific or linkage from some particular nexus. Well, so that's why that's why I'm telling you that you know it's got it it, it it's uh, that's why it's important. I'll just default your honor back without wasting. Any Ms. Love, I asked you, to, have you gotten the list of um, potential witnesses and the days you think it's gonna, you're going to take to present the rest of your case in chief? Just ballpark. Uh, Your Honor, I don't have that for the court, but I can have, I mean. Okay, all right. I told you to have it today, okay? And this is one of the, this is one of those things that I, I tell you all. I mean, it's just like my, my, 
What I tell you all is not aspirational. It is, there's a reason I ask you for it. And this is exactly what I'm complaining about at this point. You told me you were going to have it because I told you we were going to have it first. And let me add something else just briefly, and I know you don't want to hear argument. But I want to mention something that wasn't specifically in there. We are losing our jurors. We are losing our jurors. I look over there at them, and they are trying their best. They are trying their hardest. Often they are taking notes, but other times they have just tuned out. Tuned out. Uh, in a study from 1987, looking at long trials being more than 20 days and short trials being less than six days, in long trials, 46% of the jurors found that evidence was difficult or very difficult as compared to jurors in short trials, 29% in short trials. 7% um, of them in long trials said that the evidence and testimony was dull, or I'm sorry, very dull, as compared to 0% in short trials. And then, here's the, most, the thing I'm big, most concerned about, Your Honor. In long trials, 46% of jurors had their attention wander quite a bit or occasionally um, versus 24% in short trials. We are way beyond a long trial. And these studies were done back in the 80s. So D-Baby wasn't shot at or anything like that, but that full video will be on the Seti Nash uh, Clips channel and I'll fully break down what actually happened. All right, so there's that. <clears throat> Bruh, so there's a couple of things I had to clear up, right? And no disrespect to Michael Seid, but he was wrong. They took the list from 770 odd people and knocked it down to 150. So the judge was able to get that out of Miss Love. That's number one. Number two, they said, oh, it should take about four months for us to get it done. And you're talking about cross-examination and stuff like that. And I think that the defense only has 40 witnesses. So this case should be done by next January. That's, that's what I'm shooting for. Next January, it should be done. Now, here's one thing where the defense won. They got this stupid list knocked down to 150. I'm going to assume because the judge like, I'm about to nitpick and go through all this stuff and everything like that. I think that what's going to end up happening is going to get knocked down to like 110 or 100. Because at a certain point in time, you had to like, <laughs> there's no need for all of these witnesses. Now, to the, to the Baker versus the state of Georgia. Let me break it down to y'all like you are four years old. What happened is Baker is essentially a music video case, not a lyrics case, because even in the ruling, they said nothing about the lyrics. They talked about the imagery. So essentially what happened was in the beginning, they showed Buddy point a firearm directly at the camera, which means directly at the jurors. Then when the cop talked about it on the stand about what happened, gun was out again, pointing directly at him. Then in closing, they brought it up again. So that's three times that they brought it up with the gun being pointed at the jurors, which what they started with was, what kind of man is this? Well, he's the type that will brandish a firearm and all that stuff. It really wasn't needed. Dude was guilty of sin. Like, he's not going to beat his charges. Baker's still going to go to jail for the rest of his life. And some of y'all who are familiar with the case, let me help y'all out. And those who not. One of the managers for No Cap was at a club in Houston County in Georgia. And he left the club. They told him he couldn't come back. And the dude got mad, left to his car, came back and shot the place up. That's what happened. He's guilty as hell. He's going to be in jail for the rest of his life. Now, with that being said, back to it. the issue that Brian Steele and um, Chardon try to paint was that it was an issue of lyrics. It was never an issue of lyrics. And this is why I be telling y'all, bruh, like some of these cats be good at their jobs and all that stuff and everything like that. But bruh, they knew, but they still had to try. So you can't get mad at them for that. But they got major W's today. It took a big L today with the lyrics and stuff like that. But the judge said you had to lay foundation. One of the things that happened was when they were talking about SB, when they were talking about Shannon, I think that's because his name is SB or Scarface, one of the two. It was Shannon Jackson, Shannon Stillwell. Shannon Stillwell, I think that's his name. Anyways, nigga name is Shannon. Anyways, what ended up happening was he was bragging about beating a murder rap and saying that his lawyer got paid 30000 and they above the law. All right, cool. You can use that because they're going to try to pin the murder on him now. 
and the Rico. So I get that part. The other part is, is that in the beginning, they try to use, oh, I'm walking with a stick. And I robbed drug dealers. But you don't have this dude doing none of that stuff. So this idiot, the dude, he's good at his job. But in this part, he was an idiot because he was everywhere. He tried to say, well, Big Nut was a known drug dealer. But Big Nut wasn't robbed. So that makes no sense. Then he tried to say, well, Big Red or Red or whatever, Dirty Red was a drug dealer. But you didn't bring up the lyrics during that time. So that makes no sense. Then try to say, oh, well, the lady, she got robbed and she was dealing drugs and stuff like that. Y'all still have not proven that she got robbed. And once again, you didn't bring up the lyrics. So it makes no sense. And that's what the judge essentially was pointing out. Now, where I say they take major W's is simply because of this. They understood and they understand more than most that Brian Steele's job is to win appeals. And on top of that, Brian Steele is literally losing the attention span of the jurors like i said it was a whole nother lawyer that's why i put that clip in there just to prove my point a whole nother lawyer who said hey bro they are losing their attention span we have lost the jury that's why i said keith adams was better for it because he speaks real quick and about it in. now i get brian still trying to go through and make his case and all that and everything but sometimes bro too much is way too much and that's my point. And for you morons who said, hey, bro, you just admitted you know jurors. No. What I said was I had two people in the court, meaning two court reporters. I know what I'm talking about because I converse with them after the trial. Now, each one of them don't even know that I talked to the other one. Now, they might after this one. But either way it go. So it's stupid stuff like that that be pissing me off about you cats. But either way it go, man. When it boils down to it, the state has not proven their case. The judge was like, bruh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, we're going to start coming in at 830, and we're going to get done with all these motions so that I don't have to have the jury sitting on standby. And if we do this during court, I'm going to send the jurors home, and then we're going to knock it out there. And if it gets so bad, we're going to start coming in on Saturdays and Sundays. Now, listen, I like y'all. We cool. But nigga, that's a lot, Judge. I, I'll do it, though. I'll do it. I, I, I'll knock it out. Because it seems as though this is the place to be for the Young Thug YSL breakdowns. So it is what it is. But that's essentially what happened today, bro. The judge enforced some rules and stuff like that. And then essentially also said, if y'all send in y'all discovery too late, I'm going to just exclude it. And I have that under, under my discretionary power. Like, the judge was laying down law so bad and it was really for the prosecution that this dumb ass Miss Love, and I like Miss Love, and I'm, I'm not saying it because she's stupid. I'm just I'm just from California. Dumb ass. She literally sat up there and was like, can you make sure that they don't ask the same question twice from a post, from another counsel? And the dude was like, bro, the judge be calling us out on that. But I'm thinking to myself. Nigga, what you really should have said is the lady called you out for asking the same question in different ways. You sound dumb as hell, but subscribe to our best to notify. Should have keep your people aware. Hey, bro. If we hit that 200,000 mark before July, we're going to make it rain, bro. And like I said, if we hit that, if we get to 200K real soon, bro. Every 50,000 subscribers, we're just going to give $1,000 away. And I can see who's public subscribers. because I Well, be a member, and I'll show you exactly how I know people are public subscribers. And we'll just go about it from that. But uh, I'll catch you on the next one.